Alright, what is up my friends? Welcome to the fifth part of this complete Theros Beyond Death set review. And uh, if you missed all the other parts, they're on YouTube. Go watch them, alright? All the colors, all the cards. We're focusing on Constructed, uh, but we're also discussing Limited too, because some cards are obviously Limited only cards. And uh, we're going through. And uh, I'm pretty stoked, I'll be playing these cards on Wednesday in the Early Access Streamer event. Uh, I'm going to do my usual, I brew up five decks, play all five decks, usually like a 12 hour stream. Five, five, ten, ten totally new brews, and um, it's a lot of fun, make sure you join me on stream, if you miss it, it's up on YouTube, and then of course, I do my article on CoolStuffInc.com, where I discuss all the brews, so, probably my favorite piece of content that I do, uh, the ten new brews, and then the article corresponds, and uh, the set is out a few days after that, I believe, and then my article on Friday, of course, will be the article for that, so... We come to green. Green, green, green. Yeah. The most powerful color in all of magic. Blue. It's like the meme with the, the dude looking at the girl and looking at the other girl. It's all about green lately. And uh, let's see if green can keep, uh, can keep rolling here with some of the best cards printed in a long time. Green is unstoppable. And we start with a nice little spider. Arista of the Endless Web. Green, green, two for a three-five reach. So, I say this every video so far, but I want to make sure I fully iterate. Big thing is rate when we're discussing spoilers and looking at new cards. Rate is the numbers in the card and how big they are. Questing beast, and I keep saying it. Full four with haste for four. Excellent rate. Add abilities. Phenomenal card. Galvin lackey, one one for one. Not a good rate. Has to have a good ability to make up for the fact that the rate's not good. So here we have a three-five reach for four. That's an enchantment. That's a really good rate. Um, that's already, it's not really constructed playable at that rate, but it's at least very powerful. And as the ability, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, you make a 1-2 green spider token with reach. So pretty narrow ability. Um, most decks have instant sorceries. If your opponent wants to kill this, you get a spider. That's kind of reasonable. The problem is that while you may get a spider or two, what deck really wants this card? Uh, like a mid-range deck, maybe, but, you know, it's like, it's, it's okay, the rate is good, what you're getting is reasonable, but it's just kind of okay. I do like this card. Um, it is rather powerful for what it does. The question is, what deck wants it? Is there a mid-range deck that wants this? A lot of standard is about ramping into really big things or playing a little aggressive things. It's not a... It's not a good aggro card. It's not like a control card. It is a hard counter to Murmuring Mystic. So for all you Murmuring Mystic players out there, I'm sorry. Green's over blue. But it is a powerful card. It could definitely see play. Um, a lot going for it. It's an enchantment. It's got a big butt. This is the kind of kind of, kind of card that will give a red deck fits because they cast their burn spells. You get one twos. It has a, lot, has a high toughness. Um, it's definitely getting its red aggro. And um, it's a card. It's definitely a card. In limited, this card's busted, obviously. It's a very, very good card. Fun card, card to watch. Um, don't underestimate one, two spiders with reach. They really stack up very, very well. Chainweb Arknar. Arknar. One green for a one, two reach. When it comes into play, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. So, I mean, if your opponent's playing a lot of flying men, this card's okay. And then it escapes for five mana, uh, four cards, as a four five that eats a flyer. So this is the kind of card that it's the upfront part is not very good. Uh, a one two for one it doesn't really do a lot, but the back part is really good. Um, also, the spider has hands, and that's extremely creepy. And I kind of don't want to look at this card anymore. But um, you put this card in the graveyard and you escape it. That's a very good effect. This is one of the few escape cards you've seen so far that really wants to be in the graveyard and not actually cast on the front side. Um, so, kind of a weird card. Probably more of a sideboard card, but very good at what it does coming out of the sideboard or killing X1 flyers, for sure. If you kill an X1 flyer with this, even if this dies... Oh, I'm sorry. It's not a fight. It's just damage. So, if your opponent's playing X1 flyers, uh, this is a reasonable card. Otherwise, not great. And then limited... This card's probably pretty solid limited, honestly. Just jump block and escape it as a 4-5. As a it's pretty good. So, Destiny Spinner. 
two mana for a 2-3. Why not? You know, good rate. Enchantment. Creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. It's pretty medium ability. Four mana, target land you control becomes an XX of elemental creature with trample and haste on a turn. Rex is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. This card is pretty mopey. Um, the sort of like vexing shusher things you control can't be countered effect is pretty bad because typically decks that are countering things are also just killing things so they can just kill this and counter your spell. And then the mana sink ability is just not a constructively playable ability. This card's pretty bad. Um, it's definitely a good limited card because the rate's just so good. It's a mana sink and it's a good, a good, a good bear, but this is not a constructed card. It's not very good. Oh boy. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. This is your pseudo Corsair of Kerfix. So we have a 2 4 enchantment creature. That's an exploration and a prismatic omen. Everyone's talking about this card in Valakit in Modern. Uh, a possibility for sure. In Standard, the, the play extra lands part is. It's not as good as it looks because you need to actually be moving forward with velocity or you just play your extra land and you're out of lands you know so if you've ever played the card exploration or fast bond in a cube draft you kind of get that feeling pretty quickly that unless you're playing time twister or playing some sort of really big card draw um it doesn't play out like you want it to it does play very well with experimental frenzy uh duncan dinos was a deck that i built a while back that played Wayward Swordtooth and Experimental Frenzy, because obviously Frenzy has land clumps. I was pretty sad about that. So definitely a very cool card with Frenzy, and it's pretty durable, and it's a 2-4. But this is not Corsair of Kruvix. This is a much more uh, niche card that has kind of specific applications. Um, I'm sure I'll play this card with Frenzy at some point, but in Standard, this card is not that exciting. Um, in older formats of Valakut, this card could definitely be a real deal, but in standard, not super excited. In limited, a 2-4 for 3 has abilities is pretty reasonable. It's not great in limited, though. It's okay. It fixes your mana. It's, it's fine. Gift of Strength. I miss Predator Strike. Predator Strike was a pump spell that gave trample. I love that card. Reach, not as exciting. You don't want to play your combat tricks on defense. Because when you play your combat trick on defense, it means your opponent has all their mana untapped, and they are making the choice to attack into you. And you often get blown out when you use combat tricks on defense. So this is basically just a two-mana giant growth, and that sucks. So if you need a trick, it's okay, but not a very exciting limited card. Obviously unplayable constructed. Hydra's Growth, three-mana aura, uh, comes into play, put a counter on a creature, and then on your upkeep, you double the number of plus on plus on counters on enchanted creature. This is just a pretty bad card. Um, it's cute. It has a high ceiling, but the floor is unbelievably low. Um, you get blown out here pretty easily. Uh, no value to be gained from the actual enchantment. Um, yeah, you can put it on, on things that grow with counters like Pell Collector or Walking Ballista, whatever, things like that. That's just not a good place to be. You know, so not a very good card. Uh, it's fine and limited because you can, it breaks board stalls and can get ahead and win a game where you're losing, but very, very very high opportunity cost. High chance of being blown out of this card. Tower Scout, 3 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. That's pretty good. Ooh. We have a Splinter Twin card here. So, uh, if you want a Kiki Jiki and not play blue, there you go. There you go. Obviously not, not an amazing card. It's just, it just okay. It's limited, limited filler. And then if you need some sort of untap synergy combo card, I mean, I guess this card does that. But... I don't know why you need to be a red green splinter twin, not blue green, but Karyatid, not Sylvan Karyatids for sure. Two mana for a one one, that's a mana of any color. And then if you control a creature power four greater, it adds two mana. It's an okay limited card. Um, two weak for constructed power dash is thousand times better. So it's an okay limited ramper. It's a mana fixer and limited too, so it's okay. Inspire awe, four mana. Final combat damage that'll be dealt this turn. I'm sorry, print all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, except combat damage that would be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. Scry 2. Uh, if this card costs 1 or 2, maybe we could talk. But for 4 mana, this kind of effect, I mean, 
this could be a sideboard card for if you're playing a, a, a draft format and you have all enchantment creatures and they all have they have all not enchantment creatures, but this is like this is formatted for a conditional trick is just way off the menu. So not a very good card. I can't pronounce any of these names. Cloth's design. Six mana sorcery. So obviously we're only in limited territory here. Creatures you control get plus X plus X on a turn where X is your devotion to green. I mean this is like your game ending you know, limited overrun card, but no trample's not good. Um, this card will certainly end games in limited, but don't overvalue this card. The lack of trample is very, very real, and you could easily be in a spot where you just have, like, three creatures in play, and this card. You gotta make land drops play this card, and you have to draw this card. So you have less creatures because you have more lands, and you have the sorcery. Um, I could definitely see a lot of spots where people just have this card and three creatures against four creatures, and they can cast it and force jump blocker too, but it's not that good. Don't overvalue this card. The lack of trample is huge. Um, this is definitely a good mirror breaker in sealed. If you're going wide, this is much better in sealed than it is, and it is, it is in draft because games get gummed up in sealed and you need a card to actually win the game. But in draft, this card probably isn't very good. Loathsome Chimera. Three mana for a 4 1. It has escape. And it escapes as a 5-2. I'm kind of about this card. Um, a 4-1 for 3 is not great. This is obviously a draft card. Um, but escape is a very powerful mechanic. I've said it over and over and over again. That escape is much better than you think it is. Um, so this trades. And then you just escape it back. And attack again. And then trade again. Escape it back. This card is not amazing. But if you're looking for a mana sink later in the game, this card is definitely reasonable. Not a card you pull play all the time, but it's definitely a little better than it looks, because it looks pretty freaking bad. Um, but it's better than it looks for sure. Mantle of the Wolf, 4 mana aura. This card is pretty good. 4 mana aura, uh, plus 4, plus 4 for 4 mana. So already pretty good on rate. And then when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, create two, 2 wolves. Now it's very important to note that it says when this card is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, not the creature. If it said the creature, you get blown out by Brazen Borrower. You get blown out by Exiling Removal. You know, but as long as this card's on the battlefield, unless they exile this card specifically, you're going to get the two tokens, and that's really good. So, is there a deck that wants this card? Not sure on that. There's still a very high opportunity cost of tapping four, casting this card, they play a kill spell, you get blown out. But the power level is certainly there. And if you're you're in a green mirror or you're in a, a matchup where toughness really matters and sizing really matters, um, this card is definitely a very good way to do that. So this card's got a lot of power. And busted and limited. Just busted and limited. Moss Viper. I mean, unplayable constructed. It's playable and limited if you need a blocker. It's not really super exciting. Mystic Repeal. One green instant put target enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library green just gets all the best cards why is this card white you know um this card is definitely very good um there's gonna be a lot of enchantments floating around this is one green kill a god that's a thing that's a thing um so definitely probably not main deckable this is similar to oxidize in that, like, if the format's very weird, this is main deckable, but that could definitely happen. Uh, and then it's a great sideboard card. Probably main deckable unlimited because it's just so cheap. And just if you just hit a, a, a con an, um, an enchantment bear with this, that's still really good. So I think this card is, uh, is quite good. The costing here is very, very aggressive. Very in line with modern magic design. Make all the green cards cheap and powerful. It's, this is, it's not Autumn's Veil, alright? Let's, let's, let's relax, but... Nessie and Boar. 5 mana for a 10-6. I believe the only ever 10-6 in all of magic. All creatures able to block this do so. Whenever it was blocked by a creature, that creature controller draws a card. So, unplayable and constructed. Um, barring some really weird circumstances. It's a non-evasion creature that costs 5 doesn't affect the board the turn you play it. Um, however, in limited, this card is bananas good. 
and there could be some scenario where this card's playable constructed. Giving it haste would be a pretty big game um, in like a creature matchup, but kind of as a fun card, not really a good card. Very silly and limited, though. Um, just a very silly limited card. Nessian Horn Beetle, 2-2 two, two for 2. It's already a good rate. Being in combat in your turn, if you control a creature, power 4 greater, put a counter on Nessian Horn Beetle. This card's good. Um, playing this card on turn 2, and then playing a, f a 4 power creature on turn 3, say Gruel Spellbreaker, and attacking for 3, um, that's not bad. And then it scales up where it grows again. Um, this card is reasonable enough on rate, and then scales really well. Um, not every deck might want this card, but this card is constructed playable. Uh, Yorvo works, sure. There's plenty of good uh, cards to play uh, to pump this. And again, the fact that it scales every turn, so if the board stalls, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, this is a very reasonable card to constructed. It's not guaranteed to see play, but the power level is there, and then this card is just phenomenal and limited. Um, I mean, it's a bear that's relevant later in the game, which is what limited is all about. Nessie and Wanderer, 2 mana for 1 3, Constellation. Whenever you Constellate, look at the top of the cards of your library. You may put a land among them into your hand, rest in the bottom. This card's fine. Um, I would like it a lot more if the lands went to the graveyard. That would make this card probably exceptionally good, but it's still reasonable. You're still getting card advantage off your 2, off your two drop. It's a 1 3. The fact that it's not an enchantment itself is not good. As I said earlier, um, you want cards that are self-perpetuating. Frogmite is Affinity for Artifacts and is an artifact, self-perpetuating. Uh, Inventor's Apprentice needs artifacts, not an artifact, not self not self self-perpetuating. So this card is not self-perpetuating. It's not an enchantment. If this either put cards in the graveyard or was an enchantment creature, I'd be all about this card in, in Constructed. But without both of those, it's not great. It's okay, but it's not great. In limited, it's great. Um, in limited, this is just gonna, you know, keep your lands flowing, card advantage, the body's fine, but I think this card's a little short and constructed. Nexus Wardens is a three mana one four reach, constellation gain two. It's a defensive limited card. I could see if it was a deck that's desperate for cyborg cards against like a flyer deck or an aggressive deck, but probably not. It's just a limited limited filler defensive card. All right, we come to Nylea, so the green god. Um, so far, Heliod has seemed like the best god so far, the white god. Nylea is a four-mana god. It's a 5-6. It's a creature if you have five or more devotion. Creature spells you cast, you cast cost one less to cast. Tap three, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it in your hand. Otherwise, put it in your graveyard. Not loving Nylea here. Um, green is one of the better devotion colors because um, it's so based on permanence, mana acceleration, and getting things in play. So Nylea probably one of the easier gods to turn on, but I think with the gods, you're really going to ask yourself, would I play this card if it wasn't a creature? And the answer is definitely no. Um, four mana for an enchantment that reduces your creature's costs and slowly finds creatures is not good at all. So this card has to be a creature to be good. And even then, a 5-6 indestructible creature for 5 or for 4 isn't even that good. So... Nylea is a decent mana sink, but it does not really impress me. Um, this feels like, honestly, one of the worst gods. The red god at least has some sort of, like, explosive potential. Pretty, uh, pretty not thrilled here with the Nylea. Nylea has a forerunner, though. It's a 5 mana 5 through a trample. It's a limited filler card. You play it if you need it. Don't play it if you don't need it. Nylea's Huntmaster is a 4 mana 4 3. It's a reasonable rate. Comes into play, creature gets plus X plus O, or X your devotion to green. This is an okay limited card. Cuttable, but reasonable. Can push some damage through. It's okay. Hey, it's the preview card I got for CoolStuffInc.com. Nylea's Intervention. Green, green, X. Sylvan Scrying, X times, or Double Hurricane, X times. This is a weird card. I did a whole article on this card on CoolStuffInc.com. Honestly, go look for that. I'm going to skip it. Go read the article. I talked about it for like 2,000 words. I'm giving you homework. CoolStuffInc.com. Search for Jim Davis. Search for my article on this card. Nyx Bloom Ancient. I know it's a it's a meme 
and in set reviews, you you call a card a commander card. Oh, it's gonna be a fun commander card. Oh, it's gonna be a fun commander card. Well, excuse me when I say, oh, it's gonna be a fun commander card. <laughs> um, probably not playable and constructed. Um, this is a very silly, over the top card. Um, seven mana for a five five trample. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times that much mana instead. Um, that's a lot of mana, but in constructed, I mean, it's a five five for seven. You know, I don't think we're uh, sorry. A permanent for mana. Sorry. Um, what are we doing here? What What do we really need forty five mana for? You know, so Nissa who shakes the world is a little better than this card. It's not outside their own possibility this card could see play, but this is more of a kind of a casual fun card. In limited, this card actually isn't that good. Um, also, you have some big mana sink. You're not doing much here. You're not doing much here. You have a five five trample for seven. It's not even good. So this is a this is a a fun card, a casual card, commander card. That's not a bad thing. That's cool. You know. Yes, yeah, so you don't need to, you don't need to cast hydro increases for fifty. You know, casting it for ten is usually fine. <laughs> it's usually fine. This is a very over the top, very silly card. Nyxborn Colossus. Um, hot take. Are you ready? Nyxborn Colossus is better in limited than Nyxborn Ancient. Nyx Bloom Ancient. That's all I gotta say. That's all I'm gonna say. Nyx Herald. 3 mana, 4, 8, 2, 3. So rate's not very good. It's an enchantment creature. Bidding combat in your turn. Target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus 1, plus 1, and trample in the turn. This card's pretty bad. Um, if you gave a counter, I'd be all about it because it would scale well later into the game, but a small temporary boost from a small creature is not what we're looking for. Floor super low, ceiling not very high. This card's not very good. I would not want this card in my draft deck most of the time. Um, if you need a way to push through, it's okay, but this card's not very good. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's any enchanted creature. I'm sorry. I read it as another enchanted creature. I apologize. So it can target itself, so it's, it's basically a 3-4. Okay. The card's fine. I apologize. I read another, and it's not there. So, at base level, it's a 3-4. Um, that makes it a lot better. So, definitely a reasonable card. My bad. Reading is hard. Omen of the Hunt. The mana for enchantment. Um, this is a flash rampant growth. And land comes in tapped. A lot of the, th- lot of the three mana ramp spells come in untapped. And sacrifice to scry too. If you want a ramp spell, you can do worse than this card, but... This is not a very good Devotion Enabler because it costs 3. It's not a great Constellation, constellation Enabler because it costs 3. This is mostly just a bad ramp card. There's a much better green ramp card that we're going to get to um, when we get there. So this card feels like one of the worst omens to me. Not very exciting. Uh, Band Brawler. 6 mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Comes into play, fight something. Classic limited curve topper. Unplayable, constructed, but solid limited card. Um, it's a... Pseudo Chupacabra Unlimited, which is pretty good. So, Plummet. If your opponent has flying creatures, this card is good. Relentless Pursuit. 3 mana for a sorcery. Reveal top 4 cards of your library. Put a creature card and or a land card from among them into your hand. Put the rest in your graveyard. This card is not bad. Um, we see this effect pretty, effect pretty often in, uh, in graveyard kind of centric sets. It's a lot better at 2 than it is at 3. Because, as you said earlier, with the Read the Bones card, three mana is a tough spot on the curve. Even in limited, you know, Magic is a very threat dense, snowball y game now. And if you're spending your turn three, especially on the draw, just to get some minimal value, draw some cards, that's not great. But there is a lot of potential value here. If your deck is very creature dense and you're likely to hit a creature and a land, that's pretty good. But. This card is worse than it looks. The opportunity cost here is very high, and Gift of the Gargantua was not a very good card. So, there's a, there's a fail rate here of not hitting a land or a creature. Um, there's, a tempo, there's a tempo rate here. Um, it's okay. It's okay, but this is no Gather the Pack. This is no Grizzly Salvage. Um, this is not a good enabler and not a great card advantage card. It's just a very medium, limited-esque kind of fillery card. Renata called to the hunt. So the green has the worst god, and I'm not thrilled with the uh, the green demigod either. Four mana for, at worst, a 2-3. So on rate, we are not looking at a good one here. 
Um, green is the best devotion color, but it has a star for power, so we have you know a possible 4-3, 5-3, 6-3, etc. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. I would ask why this card couldn't cost two or three, but screw green. Green's been too good lately. This card sucks. Um, you don't want to make the cards you cast after this better. You want to make the cards you played before it better. Or you want your enabler to be something you play early to enable your future plays. This is essentially a, uh, a curve topper in Constructed, and this is not a good curve topper. So, not a very good card. Um, it's obviously very good limited because it's just a fine card limited. You know, it's going to do things limited that are relevant, but Constructed, this card's unplayable. Uh, definitely not a great card. Return to Nature. Reprint. Very good card to have in sideboards. Very flexible. Possibly main deckable. Obviously, the enchantment and exile graveyard parts very relevant given the set. Um, possibly main deckable. Probably not. But reasonable. Citizen Champion. Now, those who know me know that I think the best card ever printed is Tower Striker. I love Tower Striker with an undying fury. Citizen Champion is trying to be the enchantment Tower Striker. So it's a 1 3 for 3. So the rate's not great. With Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, it gets a counter, you draw a card. So you get the clue and a sacrifice immediately. Green has a long history of enchantress effects. This is a pretty good one. Um, the fact that it scales in size is good. It's a win condition by itself, which is nice. Um, and then once it gets to like 4 or 5 toughness, it starts to be hard to kill by non-black removal spells. This card is definitely very good. Um, there's an issue here, as I've said a few times already, about self-perpetuation. Um, this is not an enchantment. So Idol on a Blossoms was really good because it was a 2-2 for 4. It came into play and triggered on itself. It was it was an enchantment itself. So again, the frog might effect. It's an artifact that helps artifacts. If this card was an enchantment, it'd be busted, obviously. But this is a very good card. Um, it's hard to know exactly what you want to do with this card. Um, play white for banishing light. Play black for dead weight. Play enchantment creatures. Um, you could put ores on it. It's like a Saram, sort of. I don't know what this card wants to go exactly, but it is certainly powerful. And this card has needs, basically. <laughs> um, Tracker has no needs. You just play lands. It likes fetch lands. doesn't care. Just play lands. Play lands, crack clues, play lands, crack clues. This needs you to play a lot of enchantments, and that is certainly a very big deck building cost, but the power level is certainly there. Um, there's, there's potential here. I'm not sure what deck wants it. I'm sure I'll build a lot, a lot of decks for this card, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see what it does. Definitely a good card, and obviously busted and limited. Just dumb, rare, and constructed busted and limited. Citizen Petitioner. Green green one for a two two. Comes into play, gain life for your devotion. This is a cyborg card. I could see you know this is uh, pretty comparable to Nylea's Disciple. I would say it's better than Nylea's Nylea's Disciple in that it's on a more relevant part of the curve. Um, but it's just a sideboard card. If Burn's a deck, this is a card. Um, this card's fine and limited. I would say this card is better and constructed than Nylea's Disciple, which is a 3-3 for 4, if you don't know, and worse and limited than Disciple, because a 2-2 is worse than a 3-3, basically. So, okay and limited, sideboard card and constructed. Certainly a card you want to keep an eye on, but not very exciting. Citizen Skirmisher is a 2-drop, so just bear. Constellation, whatever enchantment is about under your control, you get plus and plus 1. So it's just it's just a pretty mopey card. Um, if you get a bear and limited, this card's fine, but unplayable, constructed. 2-drop and limited's fine. Not very exciting. Citizen Training, 2 mana for an enchantment. Comes into play, draw a card. Plus and plus 0 and trample. So now, this is the kind of orbit I like, because it completely replaces itself. You play it, draw a card. There you go. Simple as that. Um, the effect is not great. 
It's only plus one plus O, oh, but it's cheap. Cantrips. This is a velocity card. This is a card that triggers your your constellation effects. It triggers your heroic effects. Um, triggers your power power effects. Um, probably not good enough for constructed. This card costs one. I'd be all over this card constructed, like all over it, like white on rice. But um, in limited, this card is very reasonable. Don't underestimate this card. This card is a a lot of little things coming together to form a nice a nice overall package, and this card's sweet. It's not even a word. Scola Grove Dancer. It's a bear. Whenever a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere, gain one life. Put top card of your library into your graveyard. Sure. So, just another bear. It's an enchantment. It's constellation. Helps people escape. If you need a bear, it's fun. The Binding of the Titans. Two mana saga. Uncommon. Chapter 1. Each player puts top three cards of a library into the graveyard. It's your opponent, too, which sucks because you're going to get them their escape stuff going. Then you exile up to two target cards from graveyards and gain a life for each card exiled. And then chapter three, return a creature or land card from a graveyard to your end. So kind of a weird like graveyard enabler, graveyard hate, then re regrowth card. This card's pretty slow and crappy. I don't really like this card that much. Um, I like that it helps your opponent. Um, it's like, it's bad graveyard hate. It's bad recursion. It's bad self mill. I don't like this card at all. The first row in games, four chapters. Three mana to make a 1-1. One, one. Then, chapter two, put three counters on a creature you control, so it's a 4-4. Four, four. Then, if you control a creature power, four greater, draw two cards, and then make a gold token. Um, I don't love this card because it's pretty heavily weighted on chapter three going good for you. And if your opponent is able to deny you chapter three, which shouldn't be too hard, this card's pretty bad. Um... This card just puts you at the mercy of your opponent. If they're playing interactive removal spells, you're getting blown out. You know? They're going to kill your creature in response to the counters. You're not going to have a creature for the, the power of four or greater. The gold token doesn't matter. It makes a 1-1. One, one. Uh, a gold token is, is a, a treasure token. It makes a uh, makes a mana. It's a lotus petal. So, this card is definitely fine and limited, but this is not a, a card for constructed at all. Um... Not super exciting. Uh, Voracious Typh Typh Typhon. Uh, four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. So already great, good, and limited. Escape for 7. Exile 4 cards. It escapes to 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, this is like bread and butter limited card. Um, not a great... I mean, not obviously not playable in, in, in Constructed. Questing Beast, LOL. But in limited, this is like your bread and butter 4-drop. This card seems very good. Um, any card that has reasonable upfront stats... And then it's also good later. It's just your, your perfect limited card. So, great and limited. Obviously, not questing beast and constructed. War Briar Blessing. Two mana for enchant creature you control. When it comes into play, the creature fights a creature you don't control. I think it's a little, little toughness boost. I like this card a lot. Um, I think that uh, this is the kind of aura you want, where it's more of a spell, and the aura part is a nice little bonus. Um, this compares very favorably to the, the red one. That's plus two, plus seven, first strike. Um, this makes your 3-3 three, three, kill their 3-3, three, three, and now you have a 3-5. I'm huge on toughness pumping in in limited. I like it so much more than power pumping because the 4-2 just trades with the 2-2, two, two, you know, but the 3-5 the or whatever is much more durable, and obviously you don't want much of one four in your deck, but... If you're pumping a 3-3 three, three, or a 4-4 four, four with this, you have a very nice card left over and a removal spell. This is a, this is a top, top-notch top limited card for sure, and then unplayable constructed. Maybe Boggles wants this card in some weird corner case scenario, but not super exciting. All right, we are there. This is one of the more exciting cards in the entire set. We have not seen a two-mana non-creature ramp spell in standard in a long time. Uh, no rampant growths. No fertile grounds, uh, nothing like that. So, the ability to go to two from two to four has been only achievable by creature ramp, paradise druid, so on and so forth. So, the uniqueness of this card alone demands your attention. 
And then the fact that it also has a mana sink on it too. It's an aura. It's devotion. Uh, this card's really, really real. Growth Spiral is... Sure. I mean, it is two specific colors. It's not a guaranteed ramp card. It's a slightly different card, but sure. You're right. I'm wrong. You got me. But this card is definitely a very real card. Yeah, with it sucks because a lot of the green devotion cards kind of suck. Uh, but this is real. This is a ramp card, and the fact that it has it has a a mana sink ability on it when you're flooding is also pretty nice. Don't sleep on this card. End of story. The card's very good. It's also very good and limited too, because it just it's fine limited. It's not amazing and limited, but it's fine. That's it for green. So not super impressed with the green god or demigod. Um, there's been a lot of power in the demigods and the gods in other colors, but not a not not too great not too great for green, which is good. Just screw green, honestly. I'm tired of green. Green's been too good lately. So let's keep going here. If you're watching on YouTube, of course, there'll be a different video for the other colors. We've already done all the colors now: white, blue, black, red, green. If you missed any of those, they'll all be on the YouTube over the next few days. Um, we got multicolor to do, and we got colorless to do. And I can't believe it's almost 2 a.m. It's taking so long. I love it. Um, if you haven't followed the stream, hit the follow button. If you're watching on YouTube, please take a second. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, this is my first set review. I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, please like the video. Leave a comment. What's the best card in green in this set? And then subscribe to the channel. And then let me know your feedback. This is my first time doing a set review. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I need your feedback to know uh, what uh, what you like. So, YouTube folks, multicolors next.